This is Schiphol, the main international airport of the Netherlands, and one of the busiest airports in Europe. During its peak hours, planes could take off and land every two minutes from one of these two runways, although the airport actually has five main runways in total. So why does a busy airport like this is unable to operate to its full potential? Well, it's because of the impact of noise pollution. This map shows the noise pollution control surrounding Schiphol Airport. Areas highlighted in darker color indicates a high chance of being exposed to an annoying level of aircraft noise. This means that if you happen to be living in one of these regions, you are more likely to submit a complaint. Those counters also correspond to takeoff and approach patterns surrounding the airport. And this is intentional in order to minimize the likelihood that a densely populated area is directly under the aircraft flight path. But where do the noise come from? Using an acoustic imaging technique known otherwise as beamforming, researchers have been able to produce these acoustic source maps. The red blobs that you see here are the locations where loud noise is coming from. And based on these images, aircraft engines can be considered to be one of the dominant sources of noise. So let's look into how the noise is being generated in the first place. Most passenger aircrafts nowadays are powered by turbofans. The part that you can see here from the outside is the fan which drives huge volume of air inside the engine. However, what lies behind it is a set of non-moving blades known as the on-guide vane or OGV for short. The OGV is installed to improve the overall efficiency of the engine by making the flow coming out of the fan to be more straight. Think of it like a comb for tidying up your hair. However, as the turbulent wake interacts with the OGVs, loud noise will be produced. So the question would be, is there a way to treat the OGV to reduce noise? To answer this question, we are going to the job University of Technology where simulations are performed to learn more about this issue. Now, to demonstrate the fan interaction noise, I will be preparing a small experiment for you. We'll be using a couple of these uh, computer fans, one of which will be rotating, and then the other one I will place behind the first one, and this one will remain static. And to power both of these fans, we are going to use a USB voltage regulator which will then be connected to this power bank and last but not least to measure the noise we are going to use a microphone that is attached to this piece of foam and we are going to place this in front of the fan and uh, the other end of this microphone will be then connected to my phone where we can read the noise spectrum A turbofan is a quite complex piece of machinery and to simulate it completely can be quite challenging and this is why we tend to simplify things while also preserving the core mechanics so to speak. For this purpose, we have been using the rod airflow configuration where the rod produces this periodic vortices that will then impinge onto the downstream airflow. This process is somewhat similar to the periodic passing of the fan weight over the OGV. Now every time there is a vortex that's been cut by the leading edge of the airfoil, pressure fluctuations will be generated at the airfoil surface 
and this will then be radiated away as noise. In this study, we are investigating two types of noise mitigation techniques, the porous leading edge and leading edge serrations. The porous material, as its name implies, has open pores that allows fluid to flow within the material. The sample that I'm showing here is an aluminum metal foam with an average pore diameter of 800 micrometers. The leading edge serrations, on the other hand, refer to a modification of the leading edge shape along the span such as this wavy sinusoidal pattern that I'm showing here. It is given a certain shape and size, which according to the literature, should be optimal for our purposes. Afterward, we were able to predict the noise reduction of these different leading edge treatments using high fidelity simulations. We found that the overall noise reduction is around 8 decibels for the serrations and 3 decibels for the porous leading edge, we can also divide the noise reduction into two main components, tonal noise, which is like the sound of whistles, and perfect noise that sounds like the wind. The serrations reduce both tonal and perfect noise, but the porous leading edge is only able to reduce the latter. We already know from the mathematics that the noise is produced at the leading edge because of the fluctuating leaf on the airfoil. So practically, the noise reduction level should be comparable to the reduction in leaf fluctuations. We found that this is true for porous leading edge. What this means is that the porous material dampens the aerodynamic fluctuations due to the roadway impingement. However, this is not the case for the serrations because the reduction of leaf fluctuations is still smaller than the total noise reduction level. So the difference must have come from another noise mitigation mechanism. It is later found that the serrations have two separate regions where the noise sources are one at the tip and the other at the root. But because they are separated, they emit noise at slightly different phase, which may partially cancel each other out. In fact, this process is quite useful for eliminating tonal noise, which the porous material simply does not have. But what about aerodynamic performance, which eventually determines the efficiency of the OGV? While both serrations and porous material applications lead to a noticeable aerodynamic penalty, however, the impact of the serrations is less severe than that of the porous material. The particular drawback of the porous material is, well, it is porous. As you can see here, the flow from the lower side of the porous leading edge is being sucked to the other side, which leads to a huge increase in flow instability. This leakage happens because of the pressure difference between the two sides, which originally gives the airfoil its lift. So, because of the porous material being there, the pressure difference becomes smaller and so does the lift production. Okay, from this study you might be thinking, the porous material looks pretty bad, so why should we use it? Well, not so fast. Actually, we believe that there are certain cases where porous material can be helpful. For example, we also tested serrations that were made out of porous material. And to our surprise, the noise reduction was actually improved. Compared to regular serrations, the tonal noise reduction of this modified serration is about the same. But the broadband noise reduction has been increased by a couple of decibels. However, we still need more studies to better understand how different properties of a porous material can affect its noise reduction capabilities. In fact, one of the reasons as to why the serrations are performing really well is because of the optimization procedures in the literature, but nothing conclusive has been found for porous material yet. In conclusion, I would like to emphasize that our research is still far from over. Even though the leading edge treatments that we discussed earlier were showing promises, there are still many more things that we have yet to understand completely. However, given the rapid advancement in the scientific community nowadays, I would expect that we might not have to wait for long before this new technology find their way into our future aircrafts. I'm Christopher Turuna of the Aeroacoustics Research Group at the Delft University of Technology signing out.